welcome back to the channel of the Whiteboard Doctor. All you Whiteboard Doctors out there who are returning, welcome back. Those who are new, thank you for viewing. Uh, feel free to subscribe, check out some other videos, leave some comments, whatever you see fit. Uh, we are a free open access medical education channel, hoping to learn with and from you all. Um, and today's topic is going to be abnormal uterine bleeding. So what I thought, there's a very broad topic. I thought with this video, we just do an introduction to what it is, how to work it up, and then the broad differential diagnosis. And then later on in future videos, which we're hoping to get done over the next day or two. We'll go into each kind of individual part of this differential diagnosis. So uh, look for those. I'll link some at the end of each video too um, so you can keep track um, and we will get started. So um, kind of understanding abnormal uterine bleeding in quotes, it's important to understand what the normal is, right? Um, so the formal definition of a normal menstrual cycle, and I want to preface this by saying that Every patient is unique and different, right? Someone who has been having, you know, menstrual cycles in the same pattern that is a little off what is quote unquote normal, um, that is their normal. So when talking to the patient, it's important to, to say, well, you know, what is your normal? And then have you um, deviated from your normal, um, even if it doesn't quite fit this definition. But um, the formal thing is a menstrual cycle is 21 to 35 days long. And within that, there's typically five days of menstrual flow or uterine bleeding. Um, again, some people will vary from this and that is their normal, but the important thing is, are they having symptoms that is deviated from what their typical normal is? Um, so now we know normal menstrual cycle, 21 to 35 days long, five days of menstrual flow, um, what is abnormal? So there's a lot of definitions that are thrown out that kind of label different types of abnormal. Um, I will say these definitions aren't really utilized by the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, ACOG, which is our ruling body. Um, these are more from some of the more international um, organizations in obstetrics and gynecology, but I think it's kind of uh, helpful to go over just for understanding the different types of, you know, quote unquote, abnormal uterine bleeding. Um, so the first is menorrhagia. So what is menorrhagia? So this is heavy menstrual flow. Um, when you look at the formal definitions, some will put it, you know, greater than 80 milliliters, but no one ever, you know, can really know how many milliliters of menstrual flow they're having, right? So you want to ask how many pads they're soaking, how many tampons they're soaking, are there clots, etc. And if their flow feels heavy to them, um, you know, they could be quote unquote menorrhagia. Um, this next one is going to be, and this is a two, because one comes after two, good. This is going to be metrorrhagia, and this one is bleeding between periods, um, right? So you have your normal menstrual flow, which is about five days, and then if you're having bleeding in between, ooh, double between, good, we'll erase that. If you're having bleeding between your menses, that is termed metrorrhagia. So those are two different types, right? So there's heavy flow when you're on your menses, and then there's bleeding between your normal menses. The next one is going to be polymenorrhea. I keep clicking a button on accident. Sorry about that. Polymenorrhea. And this one here is um, bleeding that occurs more than every 21 days. So it's people who say their cycles you know, only last about 18 days, and then they have another uh, period or another menstrual or another menses. So, uh, menorrhagia is heavy flow during your menses. Metrorrhagia is that you have breakthrough bleeding in between your menses. And polymenorrhea are people who have um, menses more than every 21 days, more frequently. So, their cycles, they say, are only 18 days long. Good. Next one is going to be oligomenorrhea. An oligomenorrhea, let me see if I can spell it, oligomenorrhea, good. Um, oligomenorrhea is bleeding that occurs less frequently than every 35 days. So these are people who say that their cycles last, you know, 40 days, 48 days, um, you know, two months or more um, before they have a normal menses, and that is their cycle. So that's oligomenorrhea. Then there's hypomenorrhea, and, you know, this kind of, the word kind of defines it, so it's going to be hypomenorrhea, and this is patients who have unusually light flow during their menses, right? Hypo usually means light or less, 
so they have light flow during their menses. Um, and when you think about these, so I would say clinically, the ones that I kind of see used the most are menorrhagia and oligomenorrhea. Um, obviously for this lecture, menorrhagia here is kind of the one we're targeting, um, although metorrhagia, bleeding between menses and polymenorrhea, are also things that uh, could, could kind of entail abnormal uterine bleeding. But all these are qualifies for abnormal uterine bleeding because they're um, deviated from the normal. And again, we have a normal menstrual cycle, but it's important to know what the patient's normal is. Um, and then once you have identified abnormal uterine bleeding, the question is how to work it up. What do you want to know? What physical do you want to do? And then what's the differential diagnosis? Um, I do think it's important just to briefly state uh, menarche. So uh, another thing to know is when patients will start having their menses. Uh, menarche is on average patients 13 to 16 years old, right, is when they'll start having menses. Um, and then menopause, or the ceasing of said menses, is typically about 51 years old. And it's defined by greater than 12 months without a menses. All right, so patients should start having their menses about 13 to 16 years old, and they should go through menopause when their menses stops, about 51 years old, and that's if they go more than 12 months um, without any um, uh, period. Good. So I think now that we've defined abnormal uterine bleeding, uh, we can go into kind of the, the broader differential diagnosis. Um, let's see. I'll leave this here, and we'll just scroll down to start a new one here. So differential diagnosis. Differential diagnosis. Um, I think the easiest way to think about this is age determinants, right? So the first category would be less than 13 years old, right? So these patients don't typically have their menses yet. Um, so things you unfortunately need to worry about is sexual abuse, right? These patients shouldn't have any bleeding down there. Um, another, th another thing is foreign body. So if something got into the vaginal canal and is causing irritation and bleeding. Uh, along those same lines, just general irritation, whether it be from soaps or other irritants. Another one, and this is, you know, not very typical, but urinary tract malformations. Vascular malformations can cause what looks to be uterine bleeding, but is actually coming out of the urethra. So... Um, then we have kind of the next category, which would be 13 to 18 year olds. And in this category, um, you start to worry about anovulation, right? So their normal menses that they um, should have started um, are not uh, their normal. They have some hormonal dysregulation causing anovulation. Um, horm hormonal contraception um, can actually cause abnormal uterine ble bleeding. Um, some patients need uh, different agents or doses of agents to help them normalize. Uh, pelvic infections, just like if you have a urinary tract infection, you can have some blood in the urine. Or if you have a pelvic infection, you can have some bleeding. And then pregnancy, at this age, you start to worry about. And then this one, which we'll talk more about, coagulopathy. Um, this is the age of patients where um, if they have coagulopathy, whether it's, um, you know, factor eight, factor nine, von Willenbrand, something like that, um, you could start to get manifestations of abnormal uterine bleeding or menorrhagia, heavy flow, um, because they're starting to go through their normal menses and they will bleed more than other patients um, because they have the coagulopathy. Um, so that's 13 to 18 year olds. Then we have, let's do, let's see, 19 to 39 year olds. And um, this one, the big one, is obviously pregnancy. And then also, I'm going to write this term on here, and we're just going to leave it as is, because we're going to go through it in a second. Um, I call it Palm Cohen. This is a C here. And let's uh, circle that, because we're going to come back to this over and over again. Um, okay, then 40 to 50-year-olds. So 40 to 50-year-olds start to, you know, think about anovulation again. These patients are getting close to menopause. 
and might be going through anovulation. You also worry about palm Cohen, so I'm just going to put that down here. And again, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, and this, you start to worry about endometrial atrophy, right? As they're moving towards, um, as they're moving towards menopause. All right, and then last but not least, we can fit it here. Greater than 50 year olds. And this one, you worry about palm Cohen again. And again, we're going to talk about it in just a minute. I know the suspense is killing y'all. Um, and then another big one here is atrophic vaginitis, right? Drying out of the, the vaginal canal can cause irritation, and that irritation can cause bleeding. So atrophic vaginitis. Good. Um, so that is the differential diagnosis. And from that, I'm going to come down here, and we're going to go into palm Cohen. So P A L M C O E I N Palm Cohen. What does this mean? So Palm Cohen is a way to help organize um, kind of a, a differential diagnosis on these patients. Let me scroll down a little bit more. And what we'll organize it into is the palm portion, which will go here, and then the Cohen portion, which will go here. The palm portion are structural causes structural and it stands for p for polyp right a for adenomyosis l for leiomyoma leiomyoma also known as fibroids um, and then m for malignancy Right, and remember if we scroll up, Palm Cohen started for our 39 or our 19 to 39 year olds and then fell all the way through to greater than 50. Um, so think about structural causes, cervical polyps, adenomyosis, leiomyoma, and malignancy. And then the Cohen portion is non-structural. Non-structural causes. And non-structural causes would be things like, again, coagulopathy. These patients have factor eight deficiency, factor nine deficiency, von Willenbrand's, all that kind of stuff. Um, ovulatory dysfunction. So we kind of talked about some of that anovulation. Right? Do these patients have horm uh, dysfunction spelling? Um, excellent. Um, and then also uh, we have kind of just a broader category of additional endometrial causes for the E. Right iatrogenic causes, and then, you know, the category that we all love seeing on everything, not, oh, that'll be a T, not yet classified. So Palm Cohen is a way to kind of have a broad differential for these greater than 39-year-olds. Um, I will say structural causes, I think, is what Palm Cohen is really helpful for, is keeping track of those. Um, but then also you got to think about how some of these other things would play a role in this patient population. Coagulopathy, avitory dysfunction, endometrial causes, iatrogenic, and not yet classified. Okay, so that's the differential. And then just quickly, um, I think a lot of this stuff is kind of somewhat obvious. We'll just talk about kind of a general workup. Um, so how are we going to work these patients up? I should say, so for Palm Cohen, um, I'm going to do videos on a lot of those. Um, so stay tuned, and I'll link some of those at the end, um, but we'll do videos on cervical polyps, adenomyosis, leiomyomas, some of malignancy as well, coagulopathy, etc. Um, so stay tuned for those, and please check them out if you're interested. So workup. As with any workup, um, we need history, right? We need physical exam, and we need labs and imaging. So if you think about the differential, you know, anytime you're doing a history, physical, labs, and imaging, um, you're kind of thinking about what your big, broad differential is, and then you're figuring out pretest probability using the history and physical um, that the, will then guide what labs and imaging you want. Um, so history, you want to know things like what? You'd want to know duration of bleeding, severity of bleeding, right? Have they been bleeding for three months or three days? Are they soaking one pad per day or are they soaking one pad every hour? Um, changes, right? Do they have three days where it's really heavy and then 20 days where it lightens up? Um, is there associated pain? 
Um, that might drive you towards more kind of irritant and inflammatory causes. Um, have they ever had something similar in the past? Right? And that's kind of a valuable question. They go, yes, you know, two years ago I had something similar and it was this. Um, are they sexually active? So we'll just write sexual there. Um, also, what their baseline is, right? We had like the definition of a normal menstrual cycle. But what is the patient's baseline? What have they, you know, what is their standard? Um, and then medical conditions and surgical history. So med history, surge history. So these are all important questions to ask. Um, oh, and then the last thing is meds, medications right, because some of these can cause hormonal dysregulation. A uh, physical exam is kind of your general things, right? So um, for physical exam, you want to look for signs of, you know, severe anemia. So look for conjunctival pallor. Um, you can look for cap refill, just overall appearance, um, feel on their belly, make sure they have no lower abdominal pain. Um, and then the real important part of this is going to be the pelvic exam, right? Um, you want to look at the external structures, make sure there's no lesions, irritation, laceration. Um, you want to do a speculum exam, see how much bleeding is in the posterior um, vaginal fornix. Um, and then you can do a bimanual exam, see if they have any adnexal tenderness, uterine tenderness, etc. I'm um, also in the speculum exam looking for their cervix. You want to see um, if they um, have any, you know, thing coming out of their cervix, cervical polyp, fetal tissue, etc. Okay, so use your history and physical to assign pretest probability. And then your labs and imaging kind of drive uh, what we talked about. So in labs, right, you're going to want a CBC, see how anemic they are or if they are anemic. You're going to want coags, right, to see if they are coagulopathic. Um, and then in addition to that, it depends on what you're concerned about. I mean, if you're concerned about for hormonal endocrine things, things like TSH, cortisol, prolactin levels are all things to think about. Um, and we'll go into that when we talk about each condition, so videos to come. Um, and then imaging uh, depends, right? Pelvic ultrasound can be helpful if you're thinking about leiomyomas, um, if you're thinking about um, sometimes they can see uh, findings concerning for adenomyosis, although that's typically a diagnosis based on tissue. Um, also, um, additional things to think about for imaging modalities is hysteroscopy. So looking in there with a camera, Right within that, you can biopsy as well. Um, CT doesn't, doesn't tend to be very helpful. Um, pelvic ultrasound, hysteroscopy tend to be the most helpful, and then tissue sampling with biopsy is needed as well. Okay, so I do just want to say one more point: um, anchoring on abnormal uterine bleeding. Uh, you don't want to do that until you rule out. Right, so you want to rule out. rectal causes, so do a hemocult, urethral causes, do they actually have a urethral mal AV malformation causing bleeding, uh, vaginal canal causes, right, do they have a laceration in there, uh, vaginal canal that is bleeding, um, and then cervical causes, something similar, because you have to rule out all these before you can say that the cause is uterine. Oh. Okay. So that's all I have for this video. Again, look forward to videos here. We're going to do cervical polyps. We're going to do adenomyosis. We're going to do leiomyoma. We're going to do malignancy. We're going to be doing ovulatory dysfunction. Um, maybe coagulopathy as well. But we'll go through a lot of those Palm Cohen uh, differential diagnoses. So stay tuned for that. Check out any videos. Subscribe if you want to. Hit the notification bell. Um, I'm going to be posting uh, more videos here to come. Uh, please ask questions, comments, concerns. We'll do our best to answer each and every one. And we appreciate you. Have a good afternoon.